Every year in August, our country marks Women's Month. We also pay tribute to more the to the more than. 20,000 women who marched to the union buildings on the 9th of August 1956 in protest against the extension of past laws to women. To celebrate such women, we are joined in studio today by Lindelwa uh, Mangela. She's a scientist and PhD student. I did get your name right, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lindelwa. Lindelwa. Yeah, that's yes. what I thought. Okay, super. Thanks very much for joining us, Lindelwa. You're a scientist and you're working towards becoming a PhD. That is absolutely absolutely fantastic. Just tell us about uh, when you decided to go down this route and what inspired you to become a scientist and an engineer. Uh, the funny part is that, oh, first of all, thank you for having me. <laughs> the funny part is that uh, I didn't initially choose to become what I am today. I wanted to become something else because um, when I was in high school, I was excelling in maths because of hard work that I was putting in. Yes. Yeah, so I managed to get it 100% <laughs> wow. in metric. So I wanted to do BSc Mathematics. And then my teacher, one of my teachers sat down with me, was like, look at where the world is going. And you must align yourself with the changes that are happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Of which I think for everyone, that should be a good strategy yes. to look at what is happening around the world and align yourself with the skills that are necessary for where the world is going. So he recommended that I go and do computer science. I didn't know what computer science was. So I just decided to go and do computer science. In my mind, it was computer literacy. I thought I was going to learn how to create a folder and how to type and all that. <laughs> when I got there, I realized that it was deeper than that. Yes. But me being me liking a challenge, I was like, bring it on. So <laughs> I did my undergraduate at University of Zululand. Yes. Yeah, I managed to obtain it in record time. Then I did um, honors. And then after that, I, I enrolled masters that didn't succeed. And then I went back home. So I went home, I didn't know what next. And while I was at home, busy doing some stuff, helping the teenagers, and then I got a call from the CSIR to come and join them. Excellent. Yes, yeah, so when I got, I got to the CSIR, I had something else of what I was going to do at the CSR, but when I got there, I realized, oh, CSR is a research institution that uh, addresses the national challenges. So I got interest in this research thing, so I enrolled masters again at University of Cape Town. Yeah, I managed to get masters, and then after that, I was like, no, why can't I do a PhD? That's right. <laughs> Don't limit yourself. Go the whole hog. Yeah. So, so tell me, you know, the area of science um, is is sort of traditionally has been a male environment. Mm. But from your observation, do you think that's opening up a little bit and changing, and that at the end of the day, women can get into it as well? Yes. Um, I, I want us to do a little bit of reverse. To, to check it as in, was it initially created for males or it's because women were experiencing certain challenges that uh, those challenges that include the permission that they were not, um, you know, uh, permitted to move around. Hence the 9th of August marching to the union building to exercise their rights to say we are capable of being held within the house, of being held domestically. Yes. And we think we, we can do more. I don't think that initially it was created for a certain gender, but I think it's because there were restrictions. The circumstances. Yeah, the circumstances and the belief that a woman should remain at home uh, while they, the males are out there trying to get food for, for their families. Yes, so yeah, but, but uh, as soon as we got that freedom to say not we can work on our own, yes. then that when we realize that actually this field is created for every gender. Since mm. you're in the area of um, finding solutions for the country at CSIR, Mm. Um, we know that in South Africa there's a big problem with maths and sciences at the educational level, not just for girls but for boys as well. We have a very, very low pass rate. There are very few of you who get 100%, right? What do you think the challenges are there? A lot of people blame the teachers. 
Is it, is it uh, parents not doing enough to encourage their children to do homework? Is it the teachers? What needs to happen? I, I think you're in a position to come up with solutions about improving this because we remain globally uncompetitive in this arena. Uh, first of all, I wish we can stop the blame game. If we can stop the blame game, then that will be our first step to move towards the solution. Yeah. And look at how the, the maths is taught. Because myself, when I wanted to do BSc Mathematics, at the back of my mind, all I had was to come up with Lindelwe's theorem. I didn't know that you can apply maths in real life problems. So if we can maybe emphasize on career guidance, have people from APSA to come to our schools and tell us the importance of meds, meds, uh, the actuary, other you know, positions that can be found in banks in different companies come and tell us how do we apply mathematics. Yes. Because it's difficult for someone to expect a person to excel in something if they do not have a long-term goal. Where am I going to use this? That's right. You know, so if we can, we can emphasize on that, why do we need... We are a, a nation that is rich in minerals and mines. So we should think around that as to why do we need meds mm. if, if our country is rich in this, you know. So we, we should be aligning whatever that we do with what the, the potential of, of our economy is. Then from there, if there is that motivation, then we'll be eager to know meds, to do meds, even if and yes. we can still focus and push because we've got a long-term goal that That's is right. still valid, whether the teacher is behaving or not behaving, or we get enough support. Since you're in a solutions-based type of career, you're a scientist, and engineer, you're working on solutions for society, there's a lot of pessimism about South Africa, the economy, the job situation, and mm. all of that. What, is, what are some of the solutions that you think need to be applied in South Africa so that we can move on as a country? Oh, I, I, I'll go back to what I was saying. I think most successful countries, what they do is they look at what are we rich at. Like Africa, Africa is rich in many resources. You know, so we must look at what is how what are we rich on? Is it minerals? Is it uh, is it gold? Do we have oil? Do we have what do we have? Yes. And then invest on those things. That's right. If we can invest on skills that are acquired for for making sure that we sustain you know those things instead of importing things to other countries relying on other countries for the core resources that we have yes. in our country so if we can process some of these things and maybe send it out as a product instead of sending it out and it comes back now it's expensive you Indeed. know yes but it, it resides here Lindelwa, thank you very much for your time. It was a privilege talking to you. That was uh, Lindelwa Mangela. She's a scientist and PhD student. We say goodbye to our SABC3 viewers and of course we'll have more news for you on the SABC News channel after a short break. <laughs>